I have been using the Canon EOS R5 for more than two years now as my primary camera for wildlife and nature photography. But a few months ago in Botswana, I had the opportunity to test the Canon R3 for three photography activities. And I tried to test it as good as possible. I switched back and forth from the R5 and R3, trying to capture the same scene with both cameras. And this video is not a proper review, of course, because during three activities, this means like two evenings and one morning, I did not have enough time to properly test everything, of course, but it gave me a nice and solid first impression after a few thousand pictures. How is it in terms of image quality? Is 24 megapixel enough or not, at least for my, for my use case? Is the autofocus really performing that much better than the R5? And how is the overall handling of the camera? So that's what this video is about. Let's start with the body and the handling of the camera. So I always liked how my R5 felt in my hands, but I need to say every time I switch from an R5 or a 5D Mark IV back to a 1DX series camera, it just feels like something else. Uh, it's hard to describe, but it feels really nice, but there were always two big downsides. The first one for me is that the battery grip is in the camera, attached or like integrated, and this is fine for most of the cases, but there are some situations where I want to go really low and then the battery grip is just in the way because I cannot go lower. I cannot take a long, lower angle just because of the battery grip. And in these situations, I prefer the body design of an R5 or if we look at Sony uh, A1. And the second thing I didn't like is the weight. The 1DX is really heavy which for the safari shooting might be fine, but if you go out and you hike for several hours with your camera, you really appreciate it if it's a bit lighter. And here the R3 was really impressive. It's, it's so much lighter than R, uh, R1DX. In fact, I need to check, but I don't think it's much heavier than if you just take an R5 with a battery grip attached and put in the two batteries. So that was really impressive. And otherwise, there were some other nice touches as well. So um, first of all, once I put my eye to the viewfinder, I immediately realized that it's bigger than the one of the R5. Um, I was happy with one of the R5, but the R3 is just a step up. And the second thing um, is about the controlling the autofocus. And I'm quite happy with the joystick, the AF on button on my R5. I always find it a bit annoying, the whole back button autofocusing that I need to switch between moving the, moving the autofocus point around and then pressing the AF on button. I always felt I lost a bit of time. And now with the R3, as with the 1DX Mark III, by the way, um, you have this smart controller, which means you can really, on the AF on button, you have a small touchpad where you can move the autofocus point around. Um, I need to say I didn't test how well this works with gloves, but at least under the climate we had in Africa in September, this worked very well, it was very fast and like this I actually enjoyed back button autofocus. Um, yeah, and otherwise there's not much to say. You have a lot of customization functions, of course. I didn't like, for example, the position of the play button. I already had this with the 1DX. I much prefer it like with the R5 down here where I can reach it my right. Uh, right thumb to quickly switch to the playback um, but it's not a big deal you can just put it on the set button or whatever else so not a major concern what i didn't like on the other hand was that the r3 also features a micro hdmi port in the beginning i never understood why people make so much of a fuss about it i thought okay you just buy a different cable it's not a big deal but after i used the atomos almost every day on the boat I really started to hate the uh, micro HDMI port. It, it's so, it feels not sturdy, not solid. The cable is always a bit moving and I was always a bit afraid of either breaking the cable or the connector. So yeah, I really wish Canon would have a glance at Sony. They are doing this way better and offering um, full size HDMI ports. I hope we will at least see this in the R1. 
So one of the big things of the R3 is speed. It shoots also the 12 frames per second mechanical like the R5, but nobody cares because the R3 has a stacked sensor and therefore no rolling shutter. Um, and it can also shoot 14 bit in the electronic and the electronic shutter, whereas the Canon R5 is limited to 12 bit. So you get this extra dynamic range. And on top of it, it shoots even 30 frames per second instead of the 20. Um, let's address one thing after the other. First of all, 20 frames per second is plenty enough for me for, I would say, 99% of the cases. There were some situations like flying kingfishers, flying bee eaters, where I would have liked to have 30 frames per second. And here the R3 is welcome. If I just take pictures of flying herons or a heron cleaning itself or whatever, the 20 frames per second is perfectly fine and I would not even use the 30 frames per second from the R3 because you just end up with too many images. But again, for some situations it's nice and after I tried the R3, they even came out with the firmware update that, that allows up to um, 195 frames per second for a really short time. So that's amazing. So definitely not complaining about that. What is with the stacked sensor and no rolling shutter? So I didn't have a lot of rolling shutter issues with my R5. I'm shooting it electronic shutter in, I would say 99% of the time. Um, but still, it's like just this extra confidence that you can go out and know I will not have any problems with distorted wings or whatever is definitely nice. And also the extra dynamic range, it's basically the same with the R5. I sometimes switch back in like this extreme backlit situations when um, the maybe the shutter speed is not the most important thing I switch back to electronic first curtain and it's just something nice that you don't need to do this with the R3. I always think the fastest frame rate is not really helping if the other focus is not good enough to catch up with that and keep the subject in focus and the R3 is kind of the top tier of Canon, at least at the moment. So I was very eager to test how it will perform in the real world, especially compared to the R5. So as you might know, my main lens is the EF600 of the second generation, so EF lens. And there I felt basically no difference between the R5 and the R6, at least in the situations I tested. I, again, I was using it for three mornings or evenings, um, I shot some pictures with the sun in my back, I shot some backlit, um, some a bit more in the shadow, but for example, I didn't try to shoot when it was raining or snowing or when there was like a, yeah, like half an hour after sunset when it's really dark. So I didn't, by all means, I didn't test everything. Just from this experience with the EF lens, I didn't feel a difference. When I mounted the RF 100 to 500, I had the feeling with the R3, it was like picking up the subjects a bit quicker against the busy background, but the differences were not that crazy. I would have honestly imagined that it, there would be more of a difference. So to give you a bit of an example, I was also um, taking some pictures with the A7 IV, not only in Botswana, but more in Switzerland after. And there I really felt there was a big difference between the A7 IV to an R5 when it comes to detecting subjects in front of busy background and the difference to the R3 was there, yeah, rather small. One of the big features of the R3 was this uh, eye controlled autofocus so that the camera focuses where you look at. And I tried it quickly. I calibrated the camera to my eye and then tried it a bit. I didn't like it so much, it was not working 100% and I think it also needs a bit of getting used to that you are not constantly checking the edges of the frame and the corners if your framing is nice, but it was just not accurate enough, but here I just, honestly, I didn't spend enough time. I would have needed to calibrate the camera more often under different light situations. I did not do that, so I, I don't want to judge here so much. Just from the people I talked that have used an R3 before, most of them said that they're not really using this feature very often. So another big thing is of course the image quality. And here I have the feeling the R3 has somehow a little bit a nicer look. It's really hard to describe, maybe a tiny bit warmer, maybe somehow a bit softer col um, like color and contrast rendition. It's hard to say, it feels like less digital. Um, but that's not a big thing. What I felt is that the auto white balance was working way better. Usually on my R5, as with all other cameras I had before, I put the never put auto white balance. I put it mostly to sunlight or sometimes to the cloudy. But with the R3, I felt it was doing a really good job. However, that's not so important. You can just correct this in Lightroom, Capture One or whatever. 
So then the next question was, how about the details? I mean, it has 24 megapixels, whereas the R5 has 45. I took a shot of this bird here, and you will see that the pose and the background is slightly different, just because I needed to quickly change the lens. So they were like, I don't know, one minute apart or two minutes between these pictures, but the light was the same, distance was the same, everything was the same otherwise. And I took several shots, both with the R3 and the R5. They were all of similar sharpness, so I think we can trust these pictures a bit. But by all means, if you want really controlled shots, go to DP Review or whatever other website that does studio tests. I want to just have a look how much can we see the difference actually in the practice. And I think if we zoom in to the same level, we can see quite an obvious difference. The R3 is not bad, but you, you see that the R5 just resolves so much more details. Um, that's kind of crazy This with this picture here. Um, but it was also a bit to be expected, to be fair. So what? how does it change if we raise the ISO a bit? Um, because this happens quite often that we don't have so much light, so we need to raise the ISO. And here the R3 should perform clearly better. So here you can see an example with a bit of higher ISO. The image on the left was taken with the R5 with 1600 ISO, but actually it was slightly underexposed, so I needed to push it by one third. So it's equivalent to 2000 ISO, whereas the one on the right is with the R3 at 1250 ISO. So there's two thirds of a stop of difference. And if we zoom in, we naturally expect that the R3 shows less noise, also because, as said, um, there was more light on the sensor. And I would also not look too much in the background because of this and also the background color is here a bit different because the boat moved a tiny bit. I was more interested into the feather details and here I have the feeling we still see more feather details with the R5 but the difference gets a bit smaller and that's a trend I was also expecting and I'm sure if I would have tested at 6400 ISO the R3 would probably have outperformed the R5 and that has often been the case in the past with high resolution and low resolution cameras the high resolution cameras are just doing way better at lower ISO because they have this extra resolution and at some point the low resolution cameras, they outperform them at higher ISOs because there they just show substantially less noise. And the question then is always for you, at which ISO are you most often shooting? So for me, I would say that's something between 800, 1600. So I think there the R5 still has the edge. And again, also how much are you going to crop? If you shoot a lot at 400 and you crop a lot, then I think the R5 is the better deal. But also here, I try to crop as little as possible, just to be realistic. I shoot mostly with my 600, which is a fixed lens. So if I want to get closer, I need to really put already the tele-extender. So that's quite a crop that you have then. So maybe sometimes too much. So then I prefer to shoot without extender and crop a bit in post. Or I don't know, you're on the boat, you go, um, in Africa you go to the you're on the river you cannot well go farther than where the river the shore is or the other situation if you're land-based and there is suddenly a river you cannot swim through it so sometimes you have this limitation and you might need to crop a bit and here the R5 gives you just more options but I think for 90% of the cases that or even more to be honest the R3 would do just fine for me. What else did I notice with these two cameras? Um, the R3 was substantially better in filming. I don't know how much interest this is for you, but I also like to take some movies when I'm, take, when I'm out there, especially when the light gets a bit harsh or the background is not that nice or whatever. And first of all, you don't have an overheating issue with the R3 anymore. You don't have the record limit of 29 minutes anymore. And almost most importantly for me was that the stabilization is just amazing. I mean, we compared it the 100 to 400 millimeter on the Sony A1 to the R5 and 100 to 500 from Canon. And the R5 was already stabilizing way better, but the R3 is like next level. Even when we were on the boat and moving, driving over the river, and we had a herd of elephants somewhere, I could just with the R3 take the 100 to 500 and film as we were driving around them. And then you get this change of perspective and kind of almost 3D look or something. So. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, I would really enjoy the camera for filming. I mentioned before what I don't like was this um, 
small micro HDMI. And maybe one other thing not necessarily related to filming, but what I don't like is that the camera has a CFX Express and SD card slot. I once more would have wished, just as with the R5, that Canon would have put two CF Express, just because the SD slows it down. And if you want to save the pictures redundantly and you shoot a lot of action, yeah, it's just not going to work because the SD will slow down your whole workflow. So what's my conclusion? Do I regret that one year ago I bought a second R5 instead of maybe an R3? So I think the R3 definitely has some advantages over the R5. It's just a more solid body. It feels a bit more uh, like higher end and more reliable. Um, that's, I don't want to deny that. On the other hand, there are also some points where the R5 actually has the edge. As I meant, it's lighter. And as I mentioned, you can crop a bit more. And then there's one more thing that I also prefer to have two identical bodies if I switch a lot between them. Um, just because then I feel like they're both set the same way and it makes it a bit easier for me. And finally, price still matters. So last year, at least in Switzerland, the R5 was around 2,600 US dollars cheaper than the R3. And at the moment you can get an R5 for $3,000 or 3,100. So, I mean, there is like, it's a huge difference. You can almost get two R5s for the price of one R3. And this is for me a very important point. So I feel like the R5 for my photography, it's 90% at the level of the R3 for maybe around 60% of the price. So I would again, I think, buy an R5 and not an R3. Um, I'm eager what Canon brings with an R1. And I would be interested what you think. Did you, were you able to test the R3 and the R5 or do you maybe own both of the cameras? Do you agree with my findings or do you think I missed something or you see something different after using them? Yeah, for more than just three days, maybe for a couple of months. Please let me know in the comments and see you in the next one. Bye.